Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Man bodies found wrapped in tarpaulin in St. Catherine. The body of a man was found wrapped in a tarpaulin with his right eye missing on the Hill Run Main Road in St. Catherine in the vicinity of the toll entrance of the P.J. Patterson Highway on Wednesday. The Spanish Town Criminal Investigations Branch CIB are probing the circumstances surrounding the death of the unidentified man. The police report stated that the body of a dark complexion, slim built and about 5 feet 2 inches tall person, the body was clad in a black long sleeve turtleneck shirt, light blue jeans pants, multicolored shorts, and black puma sneakers. The reports from the Spanish Town CIB are that about 9 a.m., lawmen were summoned to the ear by citizens who stumbled upon the body. The scene was processed and the body confirmed dead at hospital. The police are appealing to anyone with information that may lead to the identification of this man to come forward. They can contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305-119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Police probing double murder in Westmoreland. The Westmoreland police are probing the murder of two men whose bodies were found at the Amity District in Bethelton, Westmoreland on Wednesday morning. The deceased men have not yet been identified. However, Deputy Superintendent of Police DSP in charge of operations in the Westmoreland Police Division, Adrian Hilton, told reporters that the men are from St. James' addresses. Reports are that residents heard loud explosions and summoned the police. Upon their arrival, the men were found with multiple gunshot wounds. DSP Hamilton told reporters that another man was dropped off at the Conor Regional Hospital on Tuesday night with gunshot wounds and later succumbed. He said the police suspect that the incidents might be linked to the Amity double murder, but they are doing further investigations. St. James Parish Council, Mom and Status of May After Car Accident Administrators and officials at the St. James Municipal Corporation has been oddly tight-lipped on the current situation of Montego Bay Mayor's Council Leroy Williams. Mayor Williams was reported a rush to the Conor Regional Hospital on Saturday morning after a motor vehicle accident in the vicinity of Iron Shore St. James. A well-placed source stated then that the Prada SUV that Williams was driving crashed into a park trailer during his commute home after festival night on the Reggison Fest. Since then, there has been no official communication from the usually transparent local authority. Efforts made by reporters to receive a follow-up from the corporation's CEO, Nordia Crosskill, have been futile. The corporation's public relations team has also offered no information and directed our news team to the CEO's office. At the same time, a well-placed source told reporters that Mayor Williams was transported to the University Hospital of the West Indies, where he is currently admitted for further treatment. It is reported that the mayor sustained a fractured hip and broken femur's bone in the motor vehicle accident. It is unclear, however, why the SJMC has not released any information to indicate that the mayor is currently hospitalized and of his current health status. Government MP want Mark Golding to be sanctioned for a dead voters' comment. Opposition leader Mark Golding has been warned that if he doesn't apologize for his comment about dead voters, a censor motion could be moved against him in the lower house. Chaos erupted in the lower house as Member of Parliament on both sides of the aisle agreed that the comments made by Mr. Golden on the political platform on Sunday was not appropriate. The issue stemmed from questions about the tabling of reports by the Deputy Speaker, which led to Mr. Golden making comments about constitutional breaches, which then led to government making chastising the opposition leader, claiming that he does not have the moral grounds to make such claims. MP James Robertson said Mr. Golden should be sanctioned for his dead voters' comment. Meanwhile, MP Darrell Balls said Mr. Golden has brought the office of the opposition leader, party president and member of the parliament seat into disrepute. He added that the issue is one of principle and moral and that if Mr. Golden does not correct his wrong, then as functional course of democracy, the censor motion will be followed through. A constitutionally recognized member of this house has made comments that we believe on this side will at a later date, a later time, may give reason for us to rise a sense of motion. We believe the comments go far against our constitution, our laws, and I believe at this point the decent thing to do is for me to call on him 
to make an apology and to withdraw those comments. I believe that he has to be more responsible on his platforms or what the utterances of individuals on his platforms because I believe that we don't want to see our country taken back to the days where our electoral process is suspected. The office of the leader of the opposition, a constitutional position, a leader of a major political party and a colleague member of parliament elected by the people to represent the people, that his comments has brought definitively those three offices into disrepute, undebatable. I would have thought, based on the position that he holds, that the first thing that he would have done in this honorable house is to get up and deal with it frontally, as a leader should, whether they are wrong or they are right. The second point is that without him doing that, for him to get up and speak on anything constitutional or anything else in this parliament, that he has no moral authority to do so. So that is strike two. And lastly, I, like the member from West St. Thomas, urge him, because it's never too late, and it's not too late, to do the right thing. DPP Paula Llewellyn defends her position amid public debate over change in retirement age. Director of Public Prosecutions DPP Paula Llewellyn has defended her position and stewardship as DPP in the wake of objections to an extension of her tenure. Her comments follows debate over the government's decision to amend the constitution so that the retirement age of the DPP and Auditor General can be increased from 60 to 65 years. The opposition People's National Party has strongly objected to the decision. Speaking at the Manchester Justice of the Peace General Meeting at the Decatur College in Mandeville on July 26, Ms. Lurlin said she remains focused on service above self. There have been what one could refer to as static in the atmosphere surrounding the DPP and, dare I say, the Auditor General, but such is public life at the highest level and those of us who join it to give service at the highest level recognize that the slings and arrows will always be there waiting for you but at the end of the day when you go through the fire you must come through the fire like time effort steel and allow no one to deflect you from your commitment to give service of ourselves. Please remember to subscribe, like,